So let's face it, learning how to code is really hard and being good at coding is even harder. It's very, very difficult. Whenever I recommend to people that they should start learning how to code because it's such an amazing and useful skill, the objection that I always hear is, but it's so hard, but I can't do it, but you need to, you know, think and be mathsy and all of that. So most people don't end up trying and the ones that do end up quitting when it gets hard. But the case that I'm gonna make in this video is that yes, coding is very hard, but that is precisely why you need to learn it. And I'm gonna explain what I mean using two graphs. And the first graph we're gonna be using is from a book called The Dip by Seth Godin. And it looks like this. On the y-axis, you have motivation. And on the x-axis, we have time. So we're talking about motivation as a function of time. And the way it usually looks like is something like this. When you start off learning something new, your motivation is very high because you're very excited about the fact that you're being introduced to this new exciting world and it's the, all these new things that you've never even heard about that you sort of start learning the basics of and you're sort of very motivated in the beginning because you have your end goals in mind and then whatever. But then the going gets hard and you hit what's called the dip. So your motivation drops very drastically, it drops all the way here. You start realizing that what you're doing is actually very hard and you sort of get over the early excitement. You hit what's called the dip when your motivation goes down. And this is where most people quit. Most people cannot get past this hump of low motivation and they just end up quitting because it gets too hard. However, if you get over the dip, then what happens is your motivation starts to go up and eventually it doesn't get quite as high as it was in the beginning, but you sort of get over it and you get to sort of a baseline level of motivation where you're used to it and then you start to get sort of at least somewhat good at it and it becomes more natural to keep going. But the thing is, as I said, most people quit here. So by definition, if you get over this dip, if you get up here, you will have something that most people don't have. You will have learned to code or whatever you're trying to learn and you're at a point where most people haven't reached, most people haven't reached this point. So you will have a relatively scarce skill that most people don't have. And to realize why this is important, we need another graph, this time from basic economics. Okay, so many of you might know that I didn't actually study computer science in university. I studied economics and then I sort of transferred into going to software engineering. And if you wanna know why, you're gonna watch this video where I talk about how I learned how to code in four months and why I transfer over from economics and banking into computer science and software engineering. I forgot most of my economics basically, but there's one concept that I remember. It's the most basic economics concept of all time. It's called supply and demand. And it looks like this. Wait, actually, how do you do this again? <laughs> Okay, so it looks like this. You have quantity of workers on the x-axis and you have a salary or the wage on the y-axis. And then you have the demand curve, which basically tells you for each level of salary, how much demand is there for workers in that field. Good thing for us, for, for us people who are learning to code, is that for the tech industry, demand is extremely high. So that for any given level of salary, there's a relatively high amount of demand. So the demand curve is going to be somewhere up here, whereas for some other industry like, I don't know, cleaning, it could be like down here or something like that. Because coding is a skill that there's actually an insane amount of demand for. That's why the demand curve is very high, which is good for us. And then there's the supply curve. And here's where the fact that the coding is difficult becomes very important. Because if it was very easy to learn to code, if it was very easy to get the skills to become a software engineer, then the supply curve would be somewhere like here. So for any given level of salary, there'll be a lot of supply of workers, which means that the salary for coder people would be relatively low. I hope you're following. However, in reality, because coding is hard, and as we just saw, most people quit in the dip. That means that there's not a lot of people in the world relatively to the demand who know how to code, which means that the actual supply curve is much higher. It's somewhere up here and in the labor market equilibrium, demand has to equal supply. That means that for any given set level of salary, there's relatively few people who have the skills to be software engineers because getting those skills is not very easy. Companies have to pay software engineers a lot to convince them to work for them instead of the competition because there's so much demand and not enough supply to fill all that demand. So we can see that there is a high salary. And this is just a general fact. Whenever something is hard, it means that most people by definition won't be able to do it, which means that by definition, there's less competition for the jobs that require those skills. And coding is one 
of these kind of skills. And it's one of the few industries in the world where there's ridiculously high demand, but relatively low supply. If you know how to code, you will have a skill that's extremely valuable that most people don't have that you can leverage to get a very lucrative career for yourself that also has very good work-life balance and you'll always have opportunities for you. If you're a computer software engineer, you will always have opportunities. So coding is hard and that is precisely why you need to learn it because in order to succeed in life, you need to know how to do things that most people don't know how to do. Anyway, that's just something I've been thinking about. Again, if you do want to learn how to code, it is very hard, but if you do things right, you can actually do it very quickly. And personally, I did it in only four months. And if you want to hear more about that, make sure to watch this video next, where I talk about how I learned how to code in four months. I even got a job as a software engineer at the end of it. I promise that video is even better than this one. So definitely, definitely, definitely go watch it right 